Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you are new here or you have been here in the background and you are enjoying what you're hearing, please hit that subscribe button and make sure you set the notifications to all. That way you'll be reminded of every time I upload a video. Also, if you're enjoying what you're hearing, you can also buy me a coffee. And if you're curious as to how to become a member of the channel, all of that can be found down below in the description box. With that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Neighbors from Hell Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the verse story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. Disclaimer. This video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. When I was around 20 years old, I started getting love letters in the mail. At first, there was no return address. Eventually, the third letter I received was from my much older, mentally unstable neighbor. He expressed how much he loved and needed me. He wanted a family and so on. He told me he had been watching me since I was a little girl. That part creeped me out. I've been knowing him my entire life and I never had a clue. I didn't know how he knew where I worked at, but there were a few times he would sit on the bench down the street from my job and watch me walk to and from my car. He sat on that bench, still as a rock, and only followed me with his eyes. After I told my dad and grandfather, they went to go talk to him, and eventually he stopped and basically fell off the face of the earth, because I never saw him again. To this day, I often wondered, when I was outside playing as a little girl, what if he had kidnapped me? I am so thankful he never made a move from that time forward. I am now very aware of my surroundings now. So I moved into a duplex with my ex about three years ago in what we thought was a safer part of the city. One of our neighbors, Amber, works in the duplex rental office and her husband is Ed. He was at the time fresh out of prison. Later would see all of the swastika tattoos and had been doing and continues to do landscape work for the rentals like mow the lawns, cut down trees, etc. Other than that, he is home mostly doing odds and ends, things like tinkering with his mower or truck or something. They both are super nice people very kind and loving towards others and always offer to help out. We have smoked weed together a few times. Ed smokes more than Amber and have talked about all kinds of things so I thought I could trust them and felt very safe being their neighbor. I once mentioned how sometimes when I'm home alone I hear steps in the attic over my room and what sounds like a chair being dragged how sometimes the noise follows me around the house and always freaks me out to the point of calling someone just to feel a little safer until the noises die down. Ed said, What, you think we're spying on you? In a laughing way, but it creeped me out a little. So then I break up with my boyfriend and he moves out. This is recent, so a few months ago. Ed started texting me, asking if I wanted to smoke while Amber was still at work. I declined every time, finding different excuses because I still felt uncomfortable around him. Then he asked if I wanted to have sex with him because he thinks Amber is cheating on him. That was a definite shutdown, and it was awkward as fuck. I didn't tell Amber because I didn't want to get kicked out or have some horrible, awkward tension and I hate confrontation, so I kept quiet. That's when I start to hear things in the attic above my room more often. 
It freaked me out even more when I woke up to a loud bang outside my front door at about 3 or 4 a.m. When I went to examine it, there was a small lockpick outside my door on the ground, but no one was around. I kept the lockpick, and the next day, I texted a picture of it to Amber to let her know I thought someone was creeping around, and she said, Oh, that's Ed's. That's his uh, ice pick thing. Not a long pick, sweetie. No one can pick your deadbolt with that. But I know the difference in a 4-inch skinny-ass lock pick and an ice pick. I am so scared to be alone here, especially at night. Our addicts connect, and it's not outlandish to think he could be up there spying on me. I even found a freshly drilled hole in the ceiling of my room. I just put wadded up paper in it and try not to think of it. I honestly hope nothing comes of it and I'm just feeling paranoid. Oh, and by the way, for everyone telling me to call the police, I really have no evidence. I have the lockpick still and pictures of my door being messed with, but when I've gone into the attic, it's been completely empty. I've never gone in alone because its opening is in my garage and there is no ladder so it requires two people. But as of now, it's a gaping hole above my washer and dryer and very hard to get into without good upper body strength. I had called my ex to come home when the dragging would start and by the time he got there, it'd be cleared out. So I'm hesitant to report anything with no evidence. This is 100% true. I'm staying with my boyfriend until I move out in a few weeks, despite my neighbors being upset I'm leaving. To address another thing, I didn't see any swastika tattoos until months after I had been hanging out on their back porch to smoke with them. He had his shirt off for the first time, and there were at least three on his body. It confused me because Amber and Ed were super wicked. She has Wicca tattoos all over and stuff, and so I believe maybe his tattoos were for protection in prison. Either way, after that, I stopped hanging out with them and would only speak to them if we were outside at the same time. Before I begin, here is some background. I live with my roommate in an apartment in the suburbs of Atlanta. As you may know, Atlanta is super dangerous and crime riddled right now. So we have a ring peephole camera, perfect for apartments, and a digital lock on our door for safety. Now, on to the story. About three months ago, the sweet family from across the hall moved out and we got a new neighbor. His name is David, and let's just say he's interesting. When we first saw him moving in, we were a bit taken aback by the sheer amount of stuff he was trying to fit into his one-bedroom apartment. All of it was anime merch and Star Wars memorabilia. Definitely gives me harder vibes, but not my business. When the moving truck left and a few days had passed, my roommate and I knocked on his door to give him a welcome to the neighborhood gift basket with some baked goods, dog treats, and poop bags for his dog and, of course, scented candles. Apparently, this was not the correct thing to do. After that day, David got creepy. It started out innocent enough. He would come to the door whenever he heard me or my roommate coming or going to have a quick chat or he would come over regularly to ask for salt or sugar or toilet paper. Sometimes he would ask if we would come over and watch his dog. But within the past two weeks, things have really escalated. Two weekends ago, we were out pretty late partying at the bars near the Braves Stadium. We ended up getting home at around 3 a.m., only to find David sitting at the top of the stairs waiting for us. He acted all upset, asked where we had been, and requested that we tell him if we are planning to be out past midnight. 
I laughed in his face, and he called me a mindless Stacy. I'm still not sure what that means. He also asked for access to our ring camera so he could make sure we are safe. We laughed at him again and went into our apartment. Here's the scary part. We checked the ring the next morning, and he sat outside his apartment, staring at our door for the rest of that night. When we saw that, we contacted the complex to let them know that he was acting crazy. They told us to contact the police, so we did. The police told us to contact them if he made any threats, but since we lived in a shared space, they couldn't do anything until he entered our apartment or threatened us. I assume the complex said something to him because he left us alone for the next five days or so. This week, he is out of control. He is constantly sitting outside of our apartment. My roommate has started leaving for work an hour earlier so that she doesn't cross paths with him. I cannot leave the apartment during the day because he is constantly waiting outside for me. He has asked me out, left love letters on our door, on our cars, and in our mailbox. I told him once that I wasn't interested and he told me that he would kill himself if I didn't go out on a date with him. Of course, I don't have that in writing, so the police won't do shit about it. He has also put up a ring doorbell of his own so he can track all of our movements and will leave really creepy sexual notes when we're gone so we could find them when we got back. What do we do? Oh, yeah, quick note. Thank you all for the advice. For now, my brother is spending the night on my couch for the next few nights until we can have a sit-down meeting with my landlord. We have collected all of the evidence and ring footage so we can show how much this has progressed. I'm sure the landlord and the police think we're just being over dramatic little girls or whatever. So we are not going to take no for an answer. Either he leaves or we break our lease and get our full security deposit back. We are also going to file for a temporary restraining order at the very minimum because we had heard that it would be faster than going to the police. Here is the latest update. Number one, we met with our landlord last week. Unfortunately, they aren't willing to work with us as much as we expected. They will not remove him from his unit. Since we didn't want to spend a ton of money to move, we asked if we could at least move units within the complex. The landlord offered us a one-bedroom unit on the terrace level. So my roommate and I would have to share a room in what is basically the basement of our building. Not ideal. Number two. We spoke to the police, and they said that the notes and letters weren't enough to get someone on stalking or harassment charges, especially since he lives literally three feet away from us. He probably just thinks you're cute. They did keep the ring videos and said that they would contact us sometime this week after they reviewed all of the footage. And lastly, number three. We have both moved in with my parents for the time being. Shout out to them being incredible parents. It really sucks spending $2,000 plus a month on a place you can't live. We are actively looking for other apartments, but money is tight since we would have to buy out the current lease and pay to start a new one. Also, not ideal. Not the update we were looking for, but we are both safe now, and that's what's important. Let me start off by prefacing this by saying that I live in a very creepy neighborhood. I have tons of stories that I will share later on. I'm happy to clear anything up as well. I'm a 15-year-old male living in a two-bedroom, three-bath house. My room is quite small and only has room for a bed, a desk, and a bookshelf. I enjoy reading and writing music, so it's not super ideal, but it works. Let's start with the first time this happened. 
Chapter 1. The Man Next Door, Three Months Ago Our neighbor is an old man. We'll refer to him as John for privacy reasons. Maybe 60 or 70. He lives all alone and his house is a dump. Weeds climbing up the walls with paint peeling and water stains covering the surface. His bedroom window is right across from my bedroom window. So if I went to look outside, I could most likely see into his room and vice versa. It was 11 p.m. I was sitting at my desk, which faces the window, and I decided to look up from my book. And out the window, I noticed that the lights were on in John's room. I didn't think much of it at first, but then I noticed a little flash coming from the corner of the window. I looked a little closer, and I realized that these were the man's spectacles reflecting off of something. But more disturbing, the man was watching me. I don't know how long he was watching or why, but I was creeped out beyond all description. I decided to close the blinds and go to sleep. Tomorrow, I would go over to his house to ask him why he was watching me. Chapter 2. The Point of Annoying Turning to Creepy One Week Ago At this point, seeing the old man had become less of a joy and more of a fear. He would ask me deep and kind of disturbing questions. I believe he once asked me, as I was taking my dog for a walk, If you could, would you ever skin a child? And other shit I won't even mention. Now I was in my room again. I had caught the old man watching me a few times. But since it was about 2 a.m. and I decided to open the blinds, surely the man was asleep and I could enjoy watching the stars. I opened the blind slowly, but to my horror, the man was still up. And even worse, he moved a rocking chair to the window where he could watch me. His lights were off, but it was clear he was still awake. I shut the blinds immediately and turned off my lights. I heard a curse from beyond my window. Then, silent. I decided that I would never look out that window at night ever again. Chapter 3. My Worst Nightmare. The Last Night. Last night, I was laying on my bed, sleep not coming to me. It had been a busy day, and I was processing everything that happened. When I heard something hit my window, I just assumed it was a bird or something. So I closed my eyes again, but this time I heard another bang from my window. This time, I got up and slowly peeked out of the blinds. My neighbor wasn't in his window, so I thought it would be safe to open my blinds completely, so I did that. And what I saw next absolutely shocked me. I looked all around and didn't see anything until I looked down. There was the man in our yard, smiling. His grin was wide, his teeth were yellow, his eyes glinting in the moon. That was it. That was fucking it. I slammed the blinds shut and ran to my parents' room. I told them all about the man next door and everything that had happened over the past three months. They calmed me down and then told me they were going to go look out of my window. And so they did. But in the meantime, it took for me to explain to them and for them to calm me down the man had somehow retreated back into his room and lay sleeping in his rocking chair, away from the window. My parents chalked it up to sleep paralysis or something like that. And so, I went back to sleep. But in the morning, I would receive the best news of my life. Chapter 4. Dream Come True I was awoken at 7 a.m. by the sound of the doorbell. I groggily got up and put on my clothes. Important note, I forgot to mention, I sleep naked, so that makes it weirder. I went downstairs and my parents turned around and told me that John had told them that he was moving away and that he would be gone by noon. 
I now feel safe in my own room again. So, to the man next door named John, I hope we never meet again. I will go ahead and apologies up front for the length of the story, but I am at my wit's end. We bought our house about three years ago. When we moved in, it was clear that the house directly beside me was in rough shape. Just hadn't been taken care of, peeling paint, siding, generally dilapidated. But nothing sketchy looked like it was taking place there. In the three years we lived there, Things next door have gone from bad to worse. Drugs are clearly being dealt out of that home, and at any given moment, it is occupied by five to ten people that rotate out constantly. These people are clearly strung out. Scabs, skin, and bones could barely walk many days because they are so high. Cars are in and out at all hours of the day and night. People walk down our street on foot 24-7 that enter and exit that home. It's possible to tell who is actually living there because there are so many random people daily that hang out there. Here's a bit more information about what has gone on in the past three years. A 17-year-old child was shot and killed in their driveway shortly after we moved in. The police are there constantly. I'm not talking two cop cars. I'm talking on a monthly basis, 10 plus cars and vans blocking our road off to address something going on inside that home. They stole the battery out of our riding lawnmower. They siphoned the gas out of our mower. They cut our chain link fence, snipped it from bottom to top. We have had people enter our property and open the gate to our backyard in the middle of the night, just wandering around. A man in their yard threw knives into our yard. Just for fun? I don't know. Never got an explanation on that one. They have 10 dogs. Again, hard to tell with how many people are in and out there constantly. And are breeding pit bulls. The dogs have jumped over our fence and run at us several times. We have this on camera. They have stolen packages off of our front porch. We have this on camera and filed a police report. They returned our things. They parked a stolen car in the woods behind my other neighbor's house. Police were called, car was towed. My neighbor is trying to sell his home so it's empty, and they're on his property at all hours of the night. He regularly finds needles on his lawn. If not weekly, then at least bi-weekly, we are woken up by screaming or domestic disturbances. They frequently do not have power. For an entire summer, people lived in tents in their backyard. Currently, they are using a generator to power the home. Our utilities are all through one company. So, if they don't have power, they don't have water either. The list genuinely goes on and on. A few weeks ago, I hit my limit. We were woken up at midnight by a woman screaming. It sounded like she was being assaulted. We called 911 and went downstairs to see that a woman and two men were out in the front yard with a dog tied to a tree. There was another dog there that the dog tied up was biting. They were beating the hell out of these dogs, breaking things over their backs, choking them, etc. To get them separated, it was horrifying. At one point, the woman brought out a knife and was screaming that she was going to stab the dog. Thankfully, they ended up getting them separated before that happened. They took one of the dogs into their home and left the other one tied to the tree in our yard. Cops eventually came and basically did nothing, which is what always happens. The woman denied that the dog was theirs. It really is theirs. And the two men were hiding in the back of the home 
and the cops could not enter without consent. Animal control took the dog that was tied up to our tree and they left. This is not part of the story, but fuck these people. It hurts my soul to know that people breed pit bulls to fight and do this kind of damage. It's horrible. Back to our stories. I'm constantly told that there is not much they can do. We've called the police more times than I can count for theft, trespassing, child endangerment, animal cruelty, you name it. They came out, maybe arrest someone, and then another person spawns in their place. It's never ending. I am genuinely worried for my family's safety because the situation has been escalating for years. My neighbors are all equally concerned, but understandably less invested since we are the only ones that share their property line. The city has come out and investigated their home multiple times. Our mailman evidently makes reports often. And they issue citations and warnings for the condition of the outside and inside of their home, as well as their backyard. As you can imagine, trash is everywhere. Windows and doors are missing and busted out. There's spray paint on walls and doors, etc. According to the property records, the home is owned by an 85-year-old man. According to the city inspector, they cannot figure out if he's alive or dead and have no way of verifying that the people that live there are lawfully there. The city and the cops have explained that they are likely squatting. Everyone I talk to says their hands are tied and no one could do anything about it without finding the owner of the home. But in all actuality, we have no proof that the owner's body isn't rotting in the basement. I need help. I need a solution to this because I feel like I am going insane. I can't go into my front yard without fear of a dog jumping the fence and charging towards me. I can't get things delivered to my home without fear of them being stolen. I can't get a good night's sleep because I'm constantly woken up by screaming. I can't let my own dog out in my backyard because I'm terrified they will harm him. I can't walk barefoot in the grass without fear of stepping on a needle. I'm watching animals being abused on my own property and being told there's nothing that can be done. Surely, there has to be something. I know laws vary by state and city, but I am all ears for any advice. Hello everyone. I recently moved into an apartment with my boyfriend. We instantly fell in love with the place and the price. We got approved and moved in rather quickly. The place is in a college town area. There is a bar nearby, grocery stores, and fast food places. Nothing out of the ordinary, nor sketchy. On the day of our move-in, our landlord gave us our keys and briefed us on the neighbors. There are only four apartments in this complex. Landlord said that they are very reserved for the most part. One neighbor is very scared of COVID-19, so they stay inside. Neighbor across the hall from us seems to be very reserved as well. Now, I say the best for last. Our bottom floor neighbor, let's call him Cal. As we are walking up towards our place, our landlord said, oh yeah, that's Cal. He's very weird. The boyfriend and I looked at each other like, what the fuck does that mean? His windows and doors were wide open. Landlord explained that he did not have AC at the moment. He continues to have all windows and doors open, though. We ignored it and continued unpacking. We had prior plans to leave town, so we did not spend the first few nights there. Upon arrival, we discovered why he was weird. When we first saw him, he said hello and made some comment about the weather. He seemed confused or disoriented and said, Uh, ha, yeah, okay. As the days passed, we would say hi. He would reciprocate at times. 
It was obvious that he was just socially awkward. If I pulled up into our parking lot and he saw me, he would scurry into his room. Thought it was unusual, but I brushed it off. We thought that was the extent of his weirdness. Boy, were we fucking wrong. Slamming, shoving, and hitting of his own doors started at night, and only at night. The slamming and banging was so loud that it woke us up. When we got closer to our door, we heard him yelling. We finally understood why he was deemed weird. This continued for many nights in a row. We would notice that he just stands in the middle of the parking lot and talks to himself. If he sees me, he goes back inside, etc. Things escalated this past weekend. It was late in the evening. We were chilling, watching TV, when we heard a knock. We immediately knew who it was, since Cal was chilling outside with the neighbors. Boyfriend answered the door, and Cal asked if we had seen a young Asian woman walking around. Boyfriend said no, and he walked away. Last night, I came back home from visiting my family. Immediately after I came home, Cal went upstairs. Boyfriend answered the door and asked if we had seen his mom walking around. Boyfriend sternly said no and closed the door. To conclude, this morning at 6 a.m., we heard an extremely loud knock. I awoke immediately. I went to the door and did not see anyone, though I did see a flashlight. I got super scared and woke up my boyfriend. We looked out and saw that there was a police officer looking for Cal. From what we can make out, Cal called the police due to hearing a gunshot and a young woman scream. Boyfriend was up since 5 a.m. and stated he did not hear any of that. At this point, we are on edge with this dude. If he comes upstairs again, we are going to tell him to ask the other neighbors. Here are some updates or more extension to the story. Right as soon as I finished typing this story, the previous tenant texted me. He stated that Cal was really weird while they lived there as well. Cal would talk to himself. Previous tenant said he caught security camera footage of Cal going up to the stairs near the door and started working out. Cal noticed the camera and went back downstairs. We will be installing cameras very soon. Update 2. My boyfriend is officially in I wish a motherfucker would mode. Update 3. I forgot to mention, yesterday before I left to visit my family, I heard someone say, Hello? And shuffle around my front door. I can only imagine who it was. It creeped me out because it was right after my boyfriend left to golf. Also, my boyfriend told me that he heard Cal go upstairs after the police left at 6 a.m. My boyfriend works early hours from home. And say, hello? Trying to get someone's attention. I mentioned this, but my plan is to call the non-emergency police line in the event he continues to be erratic towards himself or us. I really hope he does not get to that point. Lastly, yes, I know this man is mentally ill. However, it does not negate the fact that he purposefully tries to talk to us late hours in the evening. Compassion is shown, but boundaries will be set. I wish him the best, but our safety, including his, is prudent. Police were called because we heard him yell and scream for help. Police came out and said they already knew about him. It seems like he is harmless, but we are still keeping our distance for our safety and his. I used to live in a three-story house with my parents, younger sibling, and our dog. We moved into this house a few months before my younger sibling was even born, and that was when we first met the neighbors across the street. Lucas, who is the oldest child in their family, was always a bit strange, but there were some aspects of his personality that were more than just strange. They were just straight up 
disturbing. It would take hours to cover everything, so I'm just going to get straight to the point. I'm almost positive that Lucas has been inside of our house in the middle of the night. Our house was built on a hill, so it looked like it was only two stories from the front, and the basement was connected to the backyard. The yards in this neighborhood were much larger than they are in newer housing development, so it would have been very easy for someone to enter our backyard unnoticed. Despite this, my family was terrible at making sure all of the basement doors were locked. My younger sibling and I would always go in and out when we were playing in the backyard, or someone would go down to let the dog out, and we would end up forgetting to lock one of the doors before bed. We also lived in a safe area where it was common for people to leave their doors unlocked. However, my family did always lock the doors leading down to the basement every night, along with all of the other doors on the main level of the house. I had a fucked up sleep schedule back then, so I would usually still be awake at around three or four in the morning. These are two specific instances that happened very late at night, which make me think that Lucas has been inside of our house without our knowledge. One night, I was in my bedroom on the upper level of the house. It was probably around 2.30 in the morning when I suddenly heard the sound of an angry growl coming from downstairs. Thinking that my dog had spotted a cat in the backyard, I quickly rushed downstairs to stop him from barking and waking up my entire family. This kind of thing would happen every now and then, so I wasn't thinking too much of it at that time. But instead of going downstairs and finding my dog by the front window, I found him by the locked door that leads down to the basement. The fur on the back of his neck was standing straight up and his nose was pressed to the bottom of the door. I instantly froze when I realized what was happening. There was something or someone on the other side of that basement door. I was barely a teenager at the time, so I began to panic and started making my way upstairs as quietly as possible. I woke up both of my parents, but neither of them took me very seriously. My dad just assumed that my dog was hearing random noise coming from outside, but he did eventually go down to check things out. He said that everything downstairs looked normal, but he also mentioned that we forgot to lock one of the basement doors that night. Then there was another time that I was up late and in my room, but this time, instead of hearing the dog growling, I heard a dog bark that echoed throughout the entire house. The sound was sudden and intense, similar to a gunshot, and it almost made me jump out of my chair. Assuming again that my dog had seen a cat outside, I quickly looked out of my bedroom window and tried to spot whatever he was barking at. But my heart suddenly dropped when, instead of seeing a cat, I saw Lucas running out of our front yard into the pitch blackness. I watched him run across the street and back toward his own house before I rushed to close the curtains and duck out of sight. I remember sitting there struggling to process what I had just seen and questioning why Lucas would be in our yard in the middle of the night. I told my mom about it the very next morning and she said that she would bring it up to Lucas's mom. Because of these two instances, and because of other details that I cannot include, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that Lucas has been inside of our house in the middle of the night. If you knew the entire story behind this family, then you would also find the thought of this to be extremely disturbing. I do want to mention that this all happened years ago. My family no longer lives in that house, and those neighbors across the street are doing fine. But, looking back on everything now, I'm realizing just how creepy the situation truly was.
This happened around summer of 2000 in Midwest US, and I was a 12-year-old boy at the time. I was shy and never did well with confrontation. Anytime I was scared, I'd feel myself shaking. One day, my dad and cousin were weightlifting in the garage and it was open. I then decided to grab my bicycle out of the garage and ride up and down the street while my dad and cousin lifted. As I'm pedaling away from my house, I see another kid riding his bike probably five to six houses down from me. But he's just kind of going in circles. I maybe get like 20 feet near him, but that's it. No words were exchanged, not even a wave or a nod. I just kept my head down and kept pedaling. On my next circle back down the street, that's when things got weird. I get near the area where the kid had been riding and he's not around anymore. So I guess he went inside wherever he lived. Right as I'm about to turn around and head towards my house, which is probably like 80 to 100 yards away, I hear a man yell, Hey! In an unsettling tone. I look up and a man is standing in his front doorway probably 25 feet from me as I paused on the street with my bike. He's one of the creepiest looking dudes I've ever seen in my life. He has on a ball cap and he's wearing these thick Jeffrey Dahmer looking glasses. Tan burnt orange, dirty looking wrinkled skin and had to be in his mid 40s probably. He looked straight out of a horror movie, and he just had this sinister, angry look on his face. He then says, If you say anything to my son again, I'm going to run your little ass over. At this point, I was crying and frozen with fear. But then I start biking home faster than I ever had. I've never been in a situation like this in my whole life. I couldn't believe what happened because I never said anything to that boy. So I get to the open garage where my dad and cousin are still lifting, tell them the story, and they decide to go to the guy's house and address the situation that just occurred. My dad and cousin had a few beers and are pretty jacked, so they were ready to tussle if need be. My dad goes straight to the guy's door with my cousin behind him and knocks loudly. The man opens the door and has this huge Rottweiler by his side, barking and going crazy at my dad and cousin. He threatens to let the dog loose, but my dad and cousin aren't cowering down one bit. After a bit of bickering for a minute, the guy goes inside his house and shuts the door. Nothing else happened that night, and we walk back home. A few days pass, and now I'm going to get to the creepiest part. During the summer when my parents worked during the day, my grandma would come over and babysit my little brother and I. We were about 10 minutes from downtown, and my grandma was going to take us there to grab some food at Sonic. We get in her car and start driving down the road towards that creepy dude's house. This made me feel very uneasy, and that's the direction we had to go. As we got closer to the house, the hair on my neck stands straight up. As we go by the house, I see him. He's sitting in an old red truck in his driveway, facing the road like he's about to pull out. I don't remember well, but I think he might have even had a grin on his face when we drove by. We pass the house, and he pulls out behind us. I start freaking out a bit, so I tell my grandma the story about the man driving behind us. At first, my grandma was chill about it, and then I noticed she seemed a bit shaken. This is because she had made about six to seven turns to throw him off our trail, but he kept following us. Every little turn. At this point, me and my brother are in the back seat with our heads down as he follows us. But luckily, we made it to downtown where it was busy. We got near the police station, I believe, and, and take another turn. Then finally, he just passes us by. I never saw the man again. My mom and dad split up, 
and we left that neighborhood two years later with my mom to move to the country. My dad still lives at that same house, and I wonder if that dude stuck around for a while or even still lives at that house. What was his intent? Was it just a coincidence, or did he plan on following us? It was so weird how it looked like he was just waiting in his driveway for us to pass by. I grew up in Arizona, in a relatively safe city. Before myself or any of my friends had a driver's license, we would walk everywhere just to get out of the house and do something. Typically going to like Circle K for soda and snacks at Walmart or Target just to browse around. One time, when my two friends and I were 15 back then, we were walking back to her house through our neighborhood around sunset. At that time, everyone in Arizona was fairly friendly, so whenever you would pass by another person or group, you would exchange hello or wave. This time in particular, we were walking past a house on a corner that had a kitchen light on, where a middle-aged man was washing his dishes. When he made eye contact with us, my natural instinct was to smile and my friend was to wave. What a bad idea. The man immediately dropped his dishes in the sink and what felt like a second later was outside on the corner staring at us in an aggressive stance with both hands balled into fists. All of our flight or fight responses were completely different. One friend immediately took off running in the other direction. My other friend pissed her pants, and I was frozen in complete fear. He started charging toward us in full force, and I am so grateful that my friend grabbed my arm and we all started running as fast as we could. I was so scared. I was last in place. The man was well-built and appeared to be in great shape and had no troubles catching up to us. As I'm running, I could hear the footsteps getting very, very close behind me. He reached his hand out, tried to grab a hold of my hair, but the adrenaline finally kicked in and I was able to speed off beyond his grip. After a while of running, we realized we were no longer being chased. We hid in safety and called my friend's mom to pick us up and told her what had happened. We gave her the location of the house and all vowed to never go near that house again. The next morning, we wake up and her mom explains she checked the address of the house and someone living there was a registered sex offender. Not sure if it was explicitly because of the incident, but my friend moved houses shortly after this. Our moms all collectively agreed we were not allowed to walk alone around anyone's neighborhood and that if we wanted to go out, a parent should be close by. I completely forgot about this until I was recently talking to my friend and she brought this right up. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if this man had gotten a better grip on my hair. But I'm thankful to say we got away unharmed. At 27 today, I now carry a pocket knife and pepper spray with me at all times. My wife and I just purchased a beautiful piece of land, two and a half acres, in rural Indiana. We bought it from our very good family friends, and the plan is to build a house and become their neighbors. This dream has been in the works for a while, so much so that I actually proposed to my wife on this land a few years ago with this in mind. The sale of the land was totally legal, and all the boxes and permits had been checked by the county. Now that we own the land, we have started to do some site prep clearing trees, building driveways, etc. But two owners of the adjacent property have become hostile to 
towards us and our friends that sold us the land. My wife and I have not even met these people and believe they simply do not want any new neighbors. I have been verbally harassed and threatened twice. Our mailbox has been ripped out of the ground and they have put up all sorts of signs and cameras on the shared access road in an attempt to intimidate us. We've had the authorities intervene, but nothing of any real substance has been done to combat this. Lawyers are involved as well, but I am afraid there is not much that can be done to alleviate bad neighbors. Personally, I think these people are just angry bullies that aren't a true threat to our safety. My wife disagrees. From that, I am told that they have normal jobs and houses and behave in society as functional people. One of these neighbors, who I believe to be the main issue, does have an extensive criminal background, but he is in his 60s and is possibly battling cancer. I am now at a crossroads. Do I move forward with building our dream house on our dream property and risk having hostile and nasty neighbors around for years to come? Or do I let these people win and just sell the land now before we sink a bunch of money into it, only to have the harassment possibly escalate? Or do we just hold on to the property for a while in the hopes things calm down? We both don't know. Here's a quick side note. My wife is three months pregnant and we have a dog to think about. Also, there are no other properties available in this area to build. Fortunately, we do own a decent house in town, so finding a place to live is not an issue. Also, it is rural, so we would not be in close proximity of those people or have to interact with them much at all once we live there. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true Neighbors from Hell stories. I'd like to take a moment and acknowledge the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, Cindy, Amy Klimko, Anita V, Matt Davies, Doba Khaleesi, Edith Smith, Tammy Slayton, Colt Stonewolf, Luz Crispin, Samantha Place, Patty's niece, Denise S., Call Me Carter, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, and Cindy Cleveland. Thank you all for continuing to support Back to Ashes, for without you, there would not be me or this channel. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this selection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.